It is a powerful, powerful psalm, as, of course, every bit of God's Word is that we approach today. But this one's been quoted a number of times by a number of people in a number of tough situations. So I invite you, hear what God has to say today, listen for the Word of God, even as we offer the Word of us, the Word of struggle, the Word of challenge, the Word that can at times be the hardships of our life. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from me and from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry out in the daytime, but you do not hear in the night season and am not silent. For you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and they were not ashamed. But I, I am a worm, no man, a reproach of men, and despised by the people. All those who see me ridicule me. They shoot out the lip and shake the head. They say he trusted in the Lord. Let him rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. But you are he who took me out of the womb and made me trust on my mother's breast. I was cast from your birth. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me. Trouble is near. There is none to help. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, be, Thanks to God. be to God. So who's ever had the blues? Kathy, that was awesome. I was waiting for you to break into. Mm, yeah, yeah. You know what the blues are? Anybody? The, mu the, the mu blues is a lot. But let, let me talk about the musical form of it for just, just a minute. You heard Gary and our musical guests this morning offer a prelude of a song, mod Modified Church, called Ain't Gonna Give Up on Love. But if you've ever had the blues, you know sometimes you feel like giving up on love. That's what the blues is. Let me tell you how the musical form of it, the relational form of it, the true form of it in our world today started. It started in the English colonies, right here. This was one of the places. It was called a field holler. And it was offered by people we call slaves. They were people, just like you and me. Except they were refused rights, privileges of being people. They were forced to work in terrible conditions, in forests and fields and even in swamps. And if you've ever been Charleston, South Carolina, and been anywhere near a swamp, can you imagine what it would be like on a mid-July day to be made to go out there in the muck and the mess, the animals, the critters, the bugs, the snakes, and without having had a decent home or decent food? told to work. No pay. Sometimes even for your work receiving punishment to add to your hardship and trouble. Now clearly if you know any 
interesting about history, if we know or do any explorations of history, what we find out is the American colonies were not the only places where slaves were a part of life. Go back to the Bible. The book of Exodus. For 400 years, the Israelites were slaves in Egypt. 400 years. Another 70 years in Babylon. You can move forward to the New Testament time of Rome. The Romans, when they captured the Roman legions, when they captured an area, when their soldiers defeated the armies, they would often turn the people into slaves. One of the jobs of a slave taken by Rome, this is crazy. The Romans built lavish houses. You can see the chancel here. It's raised up and it's stone. The wealthy Romans built lavish houses and they raised the floor up and it was made out of stone just like this. But they wanted their feet to be warm. So they had slaves tucked under the stone with no way to breathe, stoking fires. The life expectancy was almost nothing. But for them, there seemed to be an endless number of slaves to be sure they kept their feet warm. It was called a field holler. When the slaves were put out in the field or the forest or the swamp, there were always a number of people put in that situation. They had no recourse but to try to escape and at the end of their life. But it was a sad life otherwise. But they had this one thing they could do. Food was bad. The housing was bad. Families were torn apart. No rights. No liberty. No voice. Except in that time, One person would start to sing. It's called call and response. Oh, Lord. And all the other people would say, Oh, Lord. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Can you hear my pain? And on and on and on. As many times as their lives were torn apart, there was this one place. One place where they could cry out. And someone could cry with them. One place. Among a few others. Where they could get relief. In the book of Genesis, God said, I made people to be together, not separate. It is not good, in the book of Genesis, God says, that people should be alone. I give you this good gift, this gift of life, Adam, Eve. Of course, we know it didn't work out the way it was supposed to. But God said, you're supposed to be together, not apart. Along comes sin. Along comes people's choice to say, I don't want to be together. Why did we make that decision? Why do we still make it? Why do we choose brokenness and conflict and treat the gift of God as if it was no gift at all? Unless it was made only for us. That's where slavery comes from. One person believing the gift is only for them. One person believing they have the right to judge themselves better than another. In the very beginning, God said, 
are all my children. And my children are meant to be together. So in the field, they would holler. They would yell out. And it was painful, and it was crying, and it was difficult, and everybody would lift it up because everything in life was so hard. But they hollered for one reason. Because in that way, they could find solidarity, relief, release, and hope. And that is what the blues are about. It's not just crying. It's crying out, believing there is an answer that will come back to you. And that answer will bring relief. Relief from something other than the pain you know. The holler in the field moved on from the field. It ended up on a porch, in a yard, inside the house, yes, in the juke joints, but also in the church. Because the foundation of the blues isn't really musical, it's spiritual. Kathy said, everybody knows what it's like at some time in life to suffer, to have the blues. Adam and Eve had it all, had it right, it got messed up. What happened? In comes conflict, in comes pain. That brings division. When division comes, guess what? You and me, we're not brother and sister anymore. It's not compliment. Conflict. God says, I did not make this life to be that way. You have made a hurtful choice. God says in that passage, What have you done? The separation religious folks call sin. It is that which causes us to be divided cheat each other, to steal from each other, to believe somehow erroneously that we have the right to judge ourselves or one another and deny that that right belongs to God and God alone. And that, my brothers and sisters, is what causes the blues. Do not have that right. Neither do I. Because our history our life our belief is rooted in brokenness and sin. Division hurt and harm. We will suffer. And in our suffering, in our sadness, in our want, in our greed, we will cause others to suffer. And we will not only have the It's not just us, so don't feel too bad with Job. All through the Bible, Job said, Why did not I not perish at birth? Why did not come, why did I not come forth from the womb and just expire? Jeremiah, why is my pain continuous? My wound incurable. Bartimaeus, the blind beggar, said to Jesus, Son of David, have pity on me. Because nobody else would. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus sweat for 
like blood. He said, Father, all things are possible for you. If at all possible, take this cup from me. If you turn a few pages, keep reading that story you will find that cup did not pass you will find Jesus the love and savior of the world hanging on a cross in agony and lifting his eyes and his voice to God he will quote this song God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It is a hard thing to have to deal with. Politically, socially, racially, financially, Religiously, personally. And if you keep reading this song, what you find immediately after that cry is the psalmist and God and Jesus <coughs> crying out for a purpose. Because they say, You are holy. Our fathers, our ancestors trusted you and you delivered them. There is not just lament, but there is hope. And if all they can do is cry on a cross, his life coming out of his veins by the moment, he cried in hope. Because he believed that hope would come and take the blues away. So I want you to hear this next passage from the New Testament, from the book of Hebrews, the answer of God to those who sing the blues. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the, heavy Jer the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable angels in festal gathering. And the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. And to God, the judge of all, the spirits of the righteous made perfect. And to Jesus. Mediator of a new covenant. And to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. What he is saying to us here is that Adam and Eve had their shot and ended up with Cain and Abel and this terrible destruction of life. But this is a new blood. This is better than human way. Stevie Ray Vaughan said, I ain't going to give up on love because love won't give up on me. He didn't know he was preaching the word of God, or maybe he did. But love is not going to give up. He trusted in the Lord. Let him rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. And Jesus, on that cross, his life draining from his veins, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And y'all, three days later, the man got up out of the grip of death in the tomb and walked away. And there since that time has been nothing, nothing that would shine lighter and brighter than that love of God 
every dark place. And every decision, failure, fault, or loss, or brokenness that might give us a glimpse. And love, and mercy, and strength, greatness of God, we have gone from blue to bliss. Now I'm going to invite you to do something right quick and then we can roll out of this. I'm going to ask you a question. What is it that makes you blue? Is it addiction? Is it feeling lost in an ever-changing world? Lord in heaven knows. It sure can. Has there been somebody in your life that's really treated you wrong? Do you remember when you used to be a good person? Maybe you look in the mirror and it feels like that person is gone. Too much has happened. To you or from you to somebody else. Cry out. Tell God. Even that you feel forsaken. Do not believe that that darkness is all that's left for your life. I was in the hospital once, and I'm sure I have told you this story before, but it's a good one, so I'm going to tell you again. I was in the hospital once as an intern with another pastor, great, great guy. Chris Carson. He told me that we were going to the hospital to see this family. They were in their late 20s. A couple of children, young children. The dad, big, strong, healthy person. He had come down with some disease, some mysterious thing. Gone downhill fast. His wife was there with him. We walked into the hospital. God is here. 